And then I took my pen out of his ear and stuck it up his nose. Gross. <laughs> oh no, it's a joke. Hey guys, and welcome back to the Wednesday News Show. I'm Teresa Corti, and I'm here with... Hugo Pilcher. And Matt is away on IFSC duties, uh, but that's what we're talking about, actually. The first bit of news is from the IFSC Boulder World Cup in Brixen. The women's final was up first, and four out of the six competitors, for them, it was their first final ever. There was a thrilling battle for third between Mio Naka and 16-year-old Jay Lu Lau. It came down to the last boulder, when Lau quickly worked out the jump sequence. Mio Naka gave it everything, but couldn't find the top on time. Gold and silver was between Hannah Moyle and Natalia Grossman. They were neck and neck throughout the competition, but Natalia snatched the gold medal with one less attempt to zone. This is Natalia's fourth consecutive gold. In the men's competition, they found a tricky and powerful set of boulders. The strong Japanese team, as usual, made it through with three finalists, and Tomo and Arasaki battled hard for that third place. UK climber Max Milne, aka Max the Future, was climbing in his second ever final and put on a show with buzzer beating tops and so much energy on display. However, Yannick Floet took it away this weekend. With his power and strength, Yannick secured his medal with topping out the third boulder, but didn't even realize he won until the fourth and final boulder. So he gave it his all by getting that extra zone and smiled in disbelief when he realized he won. Basically, guys, uh, watch the competitions. That was a really long voiceover and uh, it was actually a pretty exciting comp. Yeah? Yes. I would watch it back. There are some video highlights out on YouTube. Uh, but yeah, super good comp, uh, excellent setting. Yes. That separated all the competitors. Big ups and, like, to setters. Big ups to setters. And also it was like complicated. You know, it wasn't straightforward and Compl every athlete... Com complicated? Com Sorry. Basically, every athlete did their thing and like they all had different betas. Anyway, good comp to watch. Um, and then this week, there more stuff. is more stuff. There's, yes. the, there's that other competition. Ah, uh, yeah, the university one. Yes, the FISU. The FISU World University Championships. They gather student athletes from around the world to represent their country and compete against others. So a competition um, between university students. Yes, absolutely. Uh, mm -hmm. There is a nice image going up of the Austrian team uh, going out on stage uh, because they that's what I saw, up, saw, saw about this. Uh, and it's a funny photo because everybody looks slightly disinterested. Uh, and I think they're probably just squinting into the sun. But I noticed it when I was scrolling through uh, social media. And I said that we should do some like social media highlights. Yes. This for I me caught my eye and it's my official social media highlight of this week. People squinting to the sun. Like this, and looking away, we're like, what? what are we doing here? They could be looking like this. What am I even doing here? Or maybe they're doing this. I'm so excited. I can't even open my eyes. I don't know. Um, Either way, it's a good photo. It's a good photo. Speaking about this competition, it will be streamed on the Austrian new climbing YouTube channel. True. Uh, today, Wednesday and Thursday. So nice. Watch it. Yes, big time. Uh, right, next up, we've got some alpinism news from the Karakoram. Planet Mountain reports that an Italian-Austrian team have made the first ascent of a peak in the Karakoram, Pakistan. The mountain is named Shay Sar and was climbed on a trip which was meant to be more of a scouting mission of the area than an expedition itself. The team consisted of Thomas Francini of Italy and Austrian pair Philipp Brugger and Philipp Waldner. Italian Francini, who is probably more known for his solo ascents, said this on Planet Mountain. We managed to climb a totally virgin 6,653 meter peak, which we called Shea Sa, via a beautiful and logical line of ice up the north face. The approach and the climb itself took us about 11 hours, and this was followed by the long descent, which involved down climbing and plenty of Abolokov abseils. Alpine news. Alpine news from Pakistan. So many unclimbed peaks out there. Big time, big time. Yeah. Interesting to see uh, what their actual expedition trip Will, will, will come from it. Um, yeah, but the interesting thing about this route, they climbed, what, the North Face, 2,000 meters of North Face mm -hmm. in one single push mm -hmm. as a first ascent. That's pretty good, right? What's next? <laughs> next, uh, ooh, I got some trout climbing news from the USA. 
Connor Herson, better known for climbing the nose on El Cap at the age of 15, now has climbed, for the second time, Empath, a 9A plus sport route. First climbed by Carlo Traversi in 2020, is one of the hardest routes in the USA. The line is essentially a two-far route on granite rock. Snake-like structures and cracks. Yes, cracks. So the route is possible to protect on gear, which is exactly what Connor did. Pretty exciting stuff. True. You know and what I always find out interesting about Empath? Yes. Is that it's the hardest route in America, but it's only like a 9A, 9A plus. It's one of them. Because there are only like a couple of 9Bs. But wait, what's this? A 9A, well, it's a 9A plus slash 9A. But he did it on gear, so it could possibly be bleep. It could possibly be, be the, uh, first the first 9A, 9A trad route. route in America. So I'm just trying to help you with your words. Yes, but it could, no, but ever. First like 9A trad route ever. In 9A plus? Or plus. W what, yes. is the, what is the official grade? I don't know. People out there know. It's, it's, it's dispute. I think it was disputed. Okay. That's why. It's 9A, like 9A plus. In between. 9A forward slash plus. Slash. 9A, 9A in brackets plus. Anyway, great, great ascent. And nice to see like something, well, that has been bolted, but it's definitely possible in gear. Do, do, you, do you not think that that is a bad thing? I mean, it makes the bolts redundant. If a route redundant. is possible in gear, should it be bolted? Ethics question. Ethics corner with Hugo Pilcher. <laughs> yes, because I like bolts. <laughs> Next up, uh, what's your bit of news? I've got a little bit of trad uh, cornerage. Like this today, we haven't really got a 90 plus counter, mm -mm. whatever that is RB. called. Uh, but we've got some big trad news as well as your one. But this is more like UK trad corner. UKC have reported that UK legend James McAfee has climbed a new E9 7A in a quarry in Clamberis Pass, Wales. He's named it Crack E Maestri or Master's Crack in English. Although not totally sure of how difficult it is, he estimates it to be around French AB, and he says it's one of the best hard trad routes in the UK. UKC has also reported that the British climber Harriet Ridley has made a repeat and third female ascent of the quarryman, EA7A. The route, which features the infamous groove pitch, which comes as a third pitch out of four and is easily accessible as a single pitch climb, but relatively few climbers have climbed the four pitches of E6, E5, the 8A groove pitch, and the final 70 plus slab pitch in a single push. In fact, she is the sixth after a Royal Trad UK flush of Steve McClure, Carol Ciavaldini, James Pearson, Angus Killey, and Hazel Finlay. And finally, British climbers Robbie Phillips and Alex Moore have made a repeat of the Dave McLeod route Long Hope Direct E10 7A. The route, which is a multi-pitch sea cliff route on the Isle of Hoy off the north coast of Scotland, is a 470 meter route with around 400 meters of E5 climbing and then one monster pitch of 65 meters of E10 climbing. Phillips, who had previously tried the route the year before, came up against some unexpected obstacles whilst projecting the route. The local inhabitants of the cliff are fulmar birds, who spit vomit at you if they feel threatened in any way. At the time of Robbie's first visit in 2021, they were nesting, and so for 2022, the pair timed their visit a little bit better so as not to find their birds in the most aggressive state. On their push day, the pair started their ascent into the route at 4am, eventually topping out at 10.30pm to finish an epic day on the Chossie route. So there you go, a lot of trad in one corner. Yes. It's a kind of like warm, cuddly corner with a fire. Uh, you can have a pint of beer there as well um, and discuss trad climbing and Chossie routes Ooh. in Scotland, Wales and maybe some other parts of the UK. Lovely. Uh, that's it for the news. Let me counter. We have no 9Bs. No 9Bs. What's no going nine on? What's going on? Well, we had two last week. Mm, fine. So. What went on this week? Everybody was at competitions, pretty much. Rubbish. That's not the reason. Ish. No. Temperatures. It's not like the competition guys come out of competition and just go and climb 9As, 9Bs. I mean, they do. <laughs> Some of them. <laughs> no. Um, Still waiting for a, a 9C from Yanya Garmbret. Uh, yeah, maybe maybe we have to wait for colder temps. Because in the Northern Hemisphere, is summer. 
Okay. Almost. All right. Right, shop stuff. What have you got? <laughs> I have got the same as you. Guidebooks. Because yes, guide on the books. Epic TV store uh, this week, we're promoting our guidebooks because we have a wide selection. Mm -hmm. So I thought we a fun thing that I pick a guidebook for your summer. Yeah. And you pick a guidebook for my summer. Sure. So what have you picked for me? So for you this week, Teresa, I picked the Cullen Ridge Traverse. It's a, a traverse on the Isle of Skye, uh, and it's very scrambly, and it's beautiful, if there's no midges around, uh, if you time it right. And... There's no what? Midges. You know what midges are? No. Uh, little fly-type uh, mosquito things that oh. live in Scotland. Okay. And they attack in swarms. It's kind of like, you know the, that film? They the, bite. The birds. Yeah, they bite as well. Oh. They're horrible. Okay. Like, that's why you see people in the north of Scotland with, like, um, bees, net bees, like, protective things on their head. Always. Like camping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. During the summer, honestly. Like it's us. a thing. Oh, okay. Now, I've Big never time. been to Scotland. Never been to Scotland. I should go. You should definitely go. Anyway, this is your excuse. The Sky Cullen Ridge Traverse. You'd love it. It's like a very long traverse. It'll take you days. You'll have to like bivy, but you'll just like carry on going along this traverse. It's amazing. If anyone's ever done it, let us know in the comments because I've never done it and it looks amazing and I want to do it. Uh, and maybe if Teresa pays me enough money, I'd do it with her. Because I like multiple day traverses. You will love it. It'd be great. It'd be good training for your trail run this summer. Ah, oh, thanks for dropping that in. How's your training going? I'm not training for anything. I'm not, I haven't entered in any races. You go. I know. It's not happening. But you are. <laughs> Excellent. Right, what's your, what's your guidebook? Yes, coming back to climbing. Um, my climbing guidebook suggestion for you is also... <laughs> in Scotland, because oh, he told yeah. me you're actually going to Scotland with a fam. True. So this is a very family friendly um, guidebook, I think, cause it's the Outer Hebrides. <laughs> Hebrides? Hebrides. He that one? Yeah. Hebrides? Outer Hebrides, yeah. Okay. Anyway, it's a guidebook of this whole area. Uh, so there's like sea cliffs, mountain routes, and roadside crags. So, you know, you don't have to drive your kids up to mountains, but Perfect. you can just go cragging with them. So I just have to drive them up. To the top, no very end of Scotland, get a boat out to the Outer Hebrides <laughs> and then and then hire a car when I'm there. You said you were going to Scotland. That's true, it's only like a little, it's a stone throw away from where I'm going, so that's great. Anyway, it sounds fun. That's why I picked this guidebook for you. I mean, there's something about Scotland that we both like, so I think we should just go with it. Okay. But there are also many other guidebooks from uh, like all over the world, Europe, all over the world. Just check, you know, I'm talking to the peeps. <laughs> Talking to the peeps. Yeah, exactly. There's lots of nice guidebooks. And guidebooks are nice to have, right? Yes. There's all this stuff with like digital apps and all that stuff. But actually, what's nice, nice about a guidebook, Teresa, is... That you can, you know, make little scribbles, put post-its. That's why I spend my Sunday doing. Really? I pulled out seven guidebooks. Yeah. And uh, they all have post-its. Post-its. <laughs> like, things I want to do this summer because I have so much time. <laughs> Uh, yes, so that's the fun part of guidebooks. That is the fun part of guidebooks, yes. definitely. All right, so get yourself a guidebook at Epic TV if you want to plan out a summer adventure. Uh, right, what's up next? Uh, media. <laughs> yes. Okay, so basically this week, media, we've got the third episode of... It's kind of like it's kind of like similar to the Outer Hebrides, probably the same like longitude uh, because it's the Norway series. Episode three, they're exploring some islands. Here's a little clip. Okay, so we haven't really got a discussion point this week, so we don't discuss. Unless you have some amazing climbing topic we should discuss. Well, I, uh, I did ask um, the guys a while back what they want to see this scene discussed. Oh, true. But they kind of wanted, to, they hinted that they want us to do like another indoor project thing. An indoor project thing, such Re as? Remember the one that me and Matt did a while ago? Oh, a challenge. A challenge. Over a course of four weeks. Uh, which we could do. We could fit that into gym hits. Yes, I do have a proposition. I don't know if I can say it on air or not. Well, just just do it. 
just do it. Yeah. So Matt and I found an 8A route that we're both psyched on. Yes. Now the catch is that I'm really weak and he's a boulderer. Sure. So it's probably gonna take us more than four weeks. Where is it? It's here next to the office at the crag close by. Oh, nice. Another AA that Matt can do. <laughs> exactly, and I probably won't. All right. <laughs> Spoiler. If you want to see Matt and Teresa go climb an AA, then let us know in the comments below. Or cry at the crocs multiple times. Yeah, or both. Or both. I mean, that's surely that's part of the journey. You cry, <laughs> you cry, you cry, you cry, you cry, you cry. You cry <laughs> Slip some more. on the tears and then do it. <laughs> cry some more and then eventually you do it. There you go. Just an idea. Right, comment of the week. What have you got? Mm, I've got one from Lachlan Orman. Sorry for butchering that name. It's Lachlan Ormond. He says, I don't mind if I have to wait until April 1st next year. I just really want a 20 minute climbing daily episode that it's all cold opens. It's all cold opens. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll give you a few at the beginning and a few at the end of this. But it, why not do a 20 minutes video next year for April, April 1st? If if uh, if he sponsors it, then I'd be up for it. Yeah, definitely. Okay, because yeah, it's a solo show. I mean, you can do it. It's a special. It's a special. So just me, just like cut, cutting myself off and giving myself. I feel myself you're grief. you're nailing it. But I need a partner in crime, Teresa, <laughs> to do it. Um, okay. I'm gonna give. Uh, I'm gonna do a couple because okay. I'm gonna give. I can't find it now. One eternity later. Oh, here we go, Adrian Burnett. Actually, no, you know what? I'm not going to do it. Adrian, if you want to come in of the week, you've, you've got you to pick up your game. All right? So I'm not going to say this one. I was going to say this one, but I think you can do better. Harsh. All right? Huh? Harsh. Nah, you got to read the... Go, go down to the comments last week to, to, to see what I'm talking about. All right? But Adrian Burnett, I think you can do better. I believe in you. This is words of encouragement rather than disencouragement. Okay. All right, and the other person is said picked up on the question of the week uh, element. I'm gonna take some questions from the people. How many kilograms of gold medals does Yanya Gambret own? By Kleta Pulse. Right. right, so this is kind of a little bit of a failed attempt because I couldn't quite find out how much a IFSC gold or silver and bronze medal was. But then don't they change it every competition? Yeah, so we need to find like an average. Okay. Basically, so I've contacted IFSC. Mm-hmm. Contacted this guy called Matt Groom who works for IFSC. Everybody's useless. Nobody's go back to me. Uh, my best friend Be Beatrice Coley, uh is is come through basically. Okay. She's come through, but she's not back in the house till five o'clock this afternoon. So mm. I will do more of a precise version of this, and I'll put it up on on Instagram and okay. TikTok. Uh, but in the meantime, I can tell you that in her career, Yanya Gabrets won. How many gold? Oof, uh, 23, 24. Nowhere near. More? Yeah. 27, 28. Nowhere near. 40. Getting closer. More than 40 44 gold? 44 gold. Are you serious? This is including bold, gold, Youth. bold, boulder, lead, uh, and combine. What? Mental. <laughs> and then how many silver? Uh, a bit less, like that's in the 20s. Yeah, so 19. And then bronze, like less. Like hardly any. Like, like you literally go five. through our results in IFSC and it's just like first, 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 first second, first, 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 Every now and there's like, there's a bronze. So you've got five bronze. That's it? And one Olympic. An Olympic medal weighs 556 grams. Oh, fun fact. So if we were going to base it on that. <laughs> They're really heavy. It's half a kilo. The thing is like a gold can't weigh the same as a silver or a bronze, right? True. It's got to be heavier. I guess so. But then how much gold is there? In the world? <laughs> in the medal. Yeah, in the medal. I don't know. That's a very good question. I, I'm <laughs> estimating there'll be a lot less in gold in the IFSC medals than there are in the Olympic medals. Yeah, you'd think so. I'm not basing that on anything other than my, my instinct. I totally uh, agree. So basically she's got at least 556 grams and I reckon, I'm going to estimate, I'm going to do the calculation quickly right now. About 20 kilo. I no. reckon like 300 grams for a gold. For an IFSC gold. Yeah, let's say that. Let's say 300 grams for an IFSC gold. 300 times 44 plus uh, 250 for a silver. Uh, sure. 19 equals, yeah, okay. Plus 
200 for bronze. 200 for bronze times five equals 18,950 grams plus 556 equals 19,506 grams, which is what, 19 kilograms. Boom! Two plus two is four, minus one, that's three, quick maths. That's it? 19 kilograms, 19 kilograms. 19 kilograms. There you go. Okay, estimate. I tried to find out more uh, uh, accurate. If Yanya sees this, please invite us over to your place. We'll bring one of those like kitchen scales. <laughs> and I promise I'll make you pancakes. That is it. That's that's an offer. That's a good offer. Right, next up. Uh, is that that's it? it. <laughs> that's it. All right, after all that, thanks very much for watching. Uh, sorry, I can be more accurate, Yanya. Bye, subscribe. Oh, and this Friday, actually, we have a giveaway. So please uh, subscribe and make sure to check out the Friday Gear Show. Yeah, and if you tuned in this long, congratulations. This was a massive wobble. It's also a good giveaway. I mean, I like the giveaway. I'd like to have the giveaway. Bye. Bye.